Hello, and welcome to Minnesota Rocks, the St. Paul International Stone Carving Symposium. I'm Christine Potus Larson. I'm the president of Public Art St. Paul, the nonprofit organization that is producing this wonderful event. For the next six weeks, artists from all over Minnesota and eight foreign countries are going to be here on the lawn of the St. Paul College, and they're going to be carving sculptures from big blocks of Minnesota stone. We have assembled on the lawn rocks that have come from the Cold Spring Granite Company, from Vetter Stone, from Mankato Stone, from Bizon Stone, and from Cliffs Natural Stone. We have granite, we have limestone, we have beautiful stromatolite, and a stone called Minnesota Travertine. But we also have artists here from China, from Japan, from Egypt, Zimbabwe, Finland, Germany, Italy, Mexico, the Twin Cities, Ely, and Bemidji. So we hope that you'll join us for the next six weeks to watch how beautiful Minnesota stone becomes beautiful work of art. And all of those artworks will come to the public places of Minnesota's capital, St. Paul, as well as our partner cities of St. Anthony and Vadnais Heights. During the next six weeks, joining me to help you understand what's going on will be Mark Wickstrom. Hi, Christine. Hi. Mark is the apprenticeship coordinator for the Bricklayers and Allied Trades, and he also is a European-trained master stone carver. He's going to help you understand what you're looking at in terms of stone, what kinds of tools the artists are using, and much more. Well, should we go down and meet some artists? I think we should. Okay. Let's go. Hello, we're here with uh, Lazarus Takawira from uh, Zimbabwe. He's one of our international artists. He's busy chipping away on his uh, block of limestone he's working on. Uh, perhaps he could give us a few words. Uh, Lazarus, you got a couple minutes for us? Mm-hmm. What do you have to say about the uh, symposium to this point? You know, it's a very great experience to meet different artists, you know. The reason why is you, you share some ideas with the other artists from different countries all together, including America. You see, what is very important in art is we just sing one song. Our song is unity and peace. And also, and uh, we'll be sharing some ideas. For instance, if I go wrong sometimes with my sculpture, somebody can easily help me, no matter where he is from. We just sing one song. The reason why is uh, we um, sometimes we meet good people, sometimes we meet bad people. We take everything because our job is to make people happy. Mm -hmm. That's a very good response. Um, tell me, uh, Lazarus, when did you first start carving stone? I started carving in 1962. Until today, I'm still sculpting. And uh, most of my sculptures myself are women. The reason why is I was taught by a woman. That was my mother who taught me. And I'm proud to represent women all over the world because of my, my mother. I respect my mother. Like, um, though she was my director, my teacher, my friend, my great, uh, well, she was everything to me. You know, I become very, very close to my mother because of that. Mm -hmm. She taught me not to fight with anybody, but I fought a fight with a rock. Well, you've got some very interesting insight into the symposium, and I think it falls right in line with the spirit of the first symposium that was uh, held in uh, 1959. It's all about uh, compassion and friendship and building unity. Yes. It's, uh, uh, is there anything else you'd like to say at this time? Um, I just want to say to the people who organized this, this, uh, this symposium, it was very grateful to... <clears throat> Uh, I just want to say them, may God of Almighty bless them because it was good and uh, I'm hoping that we ought to finish it in a manner of, of, of peace and, uh, and harmony. You see, these people, they done a very great job working with um, different artists. You know, sometimes, uh, for instance, they, they've got some problems here. We've got some people who doesn't know how to speak English. 
Japanese, Chinese, and uh, they take everybody, which is very good for them. I wish God of Almighty to bless them. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully after this event, uh, we're going to make that, uh, that international language even a little bit stronger. Uh, Definitely. Lazarus, we understand that uh, you really haven't used uh, electric tools before, yes. and uh, today is kind of your uh, introduction with uh, electric tools. Could you tell us a little bit about that experience, and then I guess we're going to have you demonstrate a little bit too. Yes. You know, up to now, since 1962, I've never used what is known as power tools. But as I come here, just because meeting this different artist, one of the artists managed to take his time on teaching me to use the uh, uh, power tools. It was a great deal. No, uh, I, or even if I go back home, I don't think so I'm going to use any power tool. The reason why is, yes, this sculpture, it is supposed to be finished in six weeks' time. But uh, that is not the story. You see, you end up with power tools, I think you can break major points of the sculpture. Because in history and up to now, I discovered that every single rock is a sculpture. What is wanted is to take the dirty part out of it, it will end up a sculpture. You see, obvious sometimes myself, I just look into a stone, I'm not looking into a stone, I'm looking into a sculpture. Because they say, I ought to take dirty part out of it, it will end up a sculpture. You see, with now power tools, you end up killing some major points to make it soft. Now, a rock is not soft. Now, what we do now, we are now disturbing the rock with power tools. That's what I believe. So, so part of that with the power tools comes a, the excessive speed and possibility mm -hmm. to make a mistake or go past a certain important point on the piece. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that's true. That's true. That's what I believe. I don't know with my colleagues how they do it. Uh -huh. Well, we'll be checking back with Lazarus as he uh, makes progress on his piece, uh, and we're going to now move on to some other artists. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. I think I'm making it a day now. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're moving along now. We're, we're over here with uh, Li Yezin from Changsha, China. Oh. And uh, that's a sister city of uh, St. Paul. And we brought along CJ to uh, translate for us. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to ask uh, Lei some questions. Uh, 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 he asked Lei some questions. Uh. What, what is your first uh. How do you feel about the symposium so far and uh. having the opportunity to come here? Uh, uh, he considers that this particular event is extremely meaningful by organized by the St. Paul Arts Council. Uh, does he have a, an idea of what he's going to do for his piece of work here? Uh, and by the way, he is working in a piece of uh, local limestone. Uh, he He's, he wants to um, make a sculpture of a uh, an Asian uh, young maiden, young maiden, which yeah, which who who has the um, the graceful air of the East, mm -hmm. but who, is, who also is uh, open to the uh, spirit of the West. 
Lay, is this your preferred uh, material to work in, limestone, or are you used to working in hotter stones like granite? Uh, he considered, he realized that this is exactly what he had in mind to do mm -hmm. about that particular statue. Well, I saw Lei earlier, he was working with a, what's called a diamond chainsaw. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess we're going to have to get a shot of that later, of uh, possibly you using that. And uh, I, I was wondering myself if you've ever used that in your country. Uh, that well, actually he's not an expert in using this particular chainsaw mm -hmm. because a, a sculptor in China usually provides the idea but some of the chiseling work is left for the uh, assistants. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Well, uh, we're very glad that you could join this group. Uh, you're going to be a wonderful addition to our international cast and uh, we hope you really enjoy yourself and you have a very successful outing here at the symposium. All right, we're moving along, and uh, we're here with uh, Michael Sinicio out of Ely, Minnesota. Yeah. And uh, I understand you've done some snow carving. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a lot different than snow, I take it. It's. Well, uh, it isn't melting on you. <laughs> it isn't melting on you. In this hot sun. Okay. And um, do you have a, an idea of what you're going to do for your piece here? You're working yeah. on what, stromatolite, or is it? Uh, well, this is, they're, they're calling it, uh, um, Jasper. Jasper, okay. Which All is right. a, a pretty hard uh, semi precious gemstone. Uh huh. This, if this is some of it right here. This is some of it right here. Uh, what kind of ideas do you have for this piece? Well, uh, the symposium, the idea of the symposium is uh, um, bringing people together, artists together, sharing ideas. We attract attention, uh, other people kind of see what we're doing. and. Uh, it's all in the spirit of friendship and, and um, promoting uh, uh, compatibility and we're very, you know, there's people from everywhere, we're, we're very strange to each other, yet we have something very in common at the base of our, base of us, you know, that there our uh, basic uh, uh, languages are very similar, even though we speak different languages. So this is going to be a piece commemorating all of that and what I'm going to do is, is uh, try to capture each of the carver's faces. And uh, this is a hand with a chisel in it. This is, uh, I was watching the uh, guy from Zimbabwe. He has very big, yep. beefy hands and that was, looked very nice with a chisel. So that's the beginning. Uh, so would it be fair to say that you're you're basically making a stone that's dedicated to this event yeah. and, and incorporating yeah. uh, the yeah. artists that are here? Yeah, I'll, I'll call it uh, uh, constructing friendship. Oh, what a neat concept. Okay.
uh, falls right in line with the, uh, the the principle of the original symposium. Exactly, exactly. We have no idea what we're going to do. We had instructions not to be prepared, <laughs> uh -huh. and so we weren't. Oh, okay. So, but when it comes to you, the, uh, um, it's a nice moment. It's uh -huh. a, the anxiety evaporates then uh, when you uh -huh. when you know what it is then. Well, w would you agree that you know the first couple days out here at this symposium that everybody's uh, a little bit uh, anxious and a little bit maybe hesitant? Yeah. And uh, by the time we get into week two or three, there's going to be a gelling of this group, yeah. uh, where it's really going to be a solid uh, relationship between the artists. It's already happening. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, right now, everybody's being very polite, though. Yep. And living together, that's mm -hmm. not going to last, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> But that'll that'll strengthen uh, whatever we end up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, this is a this is a monumental task. Is it, uh, a lot of these uh, people are, are are facing a new kind of stone, mm -hmm. and uh, they have no idea how it's going to work. Um, they if that's they that, that with the um, not knowing what they're going to carve yet. You know, um, uh, there's one fellow that uh, um, is doing a project. Uh, uh, the Finnish fella, and uh, uh, Saka. Saka, yeah. Yep. And uh, um, I think he's really worried about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's making jokes about it, but that's. Uh, um, uh, well, I think uh, personally, part of the gauge of a of a true craftsman or an artist is uh, that ability to be handed a situation that is has no control on it sometimes, yeah. and to be able to to make something happen with yeah. that and to, to produce a, a high quality product. Uh, th that really is a gauge for me. I don't know if you feel the same way. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I think that would be a good gauge. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> um, would you like to give us a little demonstration on the uh, air hammer? Uh, sure. I understand it's a, a tool that you haven't really worked with that much? Uh, no, no. Okay. I work with die grinders and mm -hmm. diamond bits, but uh, not the carbide okay. or the air hammers. Okay. Well, uh, I've used jack cameras, but that's not okay. the same. <laughs> We're going to step back and uh, watch you work a little bit. Okay. Let Thanks. Okay, we're here with uh, Pasquale Martini from uh, Urbino, yes, Italy. Italy. And uh, he's uh, representing Italy at our symposium. And uh, I understand that you, uh, you instructed stone carvers for 13 years. Um, I have uh, insegnato uh, i, uh, le sculture in Italia, non è vero? Sì, sí, sì. Sí. Ho insegnato sculture per moltissimi anni in una scuola artistica in Italia per 35 anni e poi ho avuto una scuola di scultura per stranieri e ho avuto molti studenti americani. Yeah, he, he, he's taught in Italy and he's um, for many years, uh, actually he's for 35 years and he's taught many foreigners, especially Americans, at his school. Yeah, I failed to introduce uh, Randy Crochet here too. He's uh, going to help out uh, with the translation for yes, us. With my limited Italian, but uh, um, I'm trying. Here we go. Pasquale, how do you feel about having the opportunity to come here and uh, be in this uh, symposium? Uh, come sentire di venire qui e um, partecipare a questo symposium? 
beh, ho scelto di venire qui perché penso di essere felice di stare qui. Quindi adesso l'unico problema è fare una bella scultura per, perché possa rimanere in America e perché possa fare una bella figura. <laughs> Capito? <laughs> Um, he's glad to be here and um, glad to participate and uh, if you were, uh, to make you're going to make a good happy to make a good sculpture. Sculpture. Yes. Sculpture. And uh, I was going to ask you about your selection of stone. It looks like you've chosen a uh, local limestone. Um, is this one that appealed to you, to you the most, or uh, what is your preference as far as material to work with? K I Q Z O Questa Tipa de perché io ho una creatività, io quando lavoro, lavoro molto veloce e ho bisogno di un materiale che mi fa lavorare veloce, quickly, mm -hmm. quickly. And, uh, sì, e quindi uh, limestone is not uh, hard, duro, e quindi mi dà la possibilità di creare velocemente. So he, limestone isn't very hard. So he can, and he doesn't have much time to work, I'm filling that in. So he'll be able to um, finish his sculpture quickly in this relatively soft type of rock mm -hmm. compared to say granite or something else. Yeah, I picked up on some of that about the creativity and the and speed at which you yeah, can do it. He can be creative and not worry about oh. being held back by the harder rocks. Well, we're extremely glad you, you joined this group and uh, your experience, your, your years of experience as a teacher are going to come in very handy and uh, hopefully we're all going to learn a lot from each other in the next six weeks. Siamo molto contento che um, puoi uh, essere qui e uh, le molte anni di esperienza di insegnare in Italia e molto aiutare per noi qui e per il simposio e, e Ma, siamo molto contenti. Sì. Volevo, volevo aggiungere che mh, eh, io ho sempre eh, lavorato molto bene con gli studenti americani e adesso ancora in Italia ho una scuola per studenti, vengono da diverse parti del mondo, Colombia, Germania, mm. Italia, Francia, eh, Austria e quindi io continuo, continuo questa tradizione a voler insegnare a degli studenti, possibilmente stranieri. Ne sono molto felice. He's very happy. He has many students from many, he's men, mentioned many countries, France, Belgium and so forth. And he said he's always worked very well with um, American students. And so he's very happy to continue that teaching here in the United States and to pass on those traditions. No, in Italia. Oh, in I in insegno in Italia. Yeah, he's taught organizzo, Italian. Io oh, organizzo i corsi in Italia yeah. per studenti stranieri. Yeah, he's taught... In, in my studio. Yeah, he's taught foreign students in his studio in Italy. Mm -hmm. right. uh, so the local stone, uh, was this a match made in heaven? Are you, are you, do you think this is going to be a good tag team between you and the, the local limestone? È un buon cambio di questa pietra e te. Eh, un, un buon rapporto, un buon rapporto, cioè un po', sì, eh, sì. Stone eh, with me a uh, good uh, feeling. Eh? Sì, uh, yes. Sì, sì, sì. <laughs> no. buono, sì. yes, yes, yes. For me, uh, I, um, I would like to start quickly tomorrow morning to work. Well, I think uh, that pretty much uh, proves it, that he's, he's raring to go right now. He'd like to get started today. It's kind of a yeah. quiet day here at the symposium, but uh, the, later on in the week, we're going to get a good, uh, good bite into the, uh, the activities here. Yeah. So, um, eh, cosa ha detto? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, uh, oggi è un uh, giorno um, lento, lentamente. Sì, lento, sì, sì, sì. lento. Ma um, il lavoro uh, era, uh, sarà più, um, più tardi uh, ne, ne, nella settimana. Sì, 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 esatto. Da domani <laughs> in poi. Sì. Eh? <laughs> well, okay. I guess that's, uh, that's about it. Uh, we'll be uh, coming back and paying you a visit later on as you get further along in your progress. Ritorna più tardi. Um, Ah, per tardi al, eh, il processo. Ok, sì. Thank you very e anche. Much. Thank you. <laughs> ok.
Now you've had a chance to meet some of the artists of Minnesota Rocks. Let me tell you how we have found them. About a year and a half ago, we began looking initially for artists from Minnesota. We issued a call to artists and we sent mailings out all over the state. We posted it online. We advertised in the newspaper. We were looking for master stone carvers from Minnesota. We had many wonderful people respond and we chose the six great artists we have. It was another issue to find the artists from all over the world. We were fortunate to be able to work with the sister city committees of three different cities to find Sakari Peltola of Finland. He is from uh, a sister city of the city of St. Anthony. We have a sister city in St. Paul uh, of Chengcha, China. And that is where the artist Li Yixing has come from. And we have a sister city in Neuss, Germany, and that is where Jürgen Jahn came from. But to find artists from other parts of the world was a much more challenging issue. We were very fortunate to be able to make a connection with a local gallery, the Miri Piri Gallery, which represents artists from the Shona tribe of Zimbabwe. And it is through that connection that we found the wonderful Lazarus Takawira. We found the artist Atsuo Okamoto because he had been a part of international stone carving symposia in many countries and at one time had met our board member Philip Ricci in Germany over 20 years ago. The artist from Italy came to us because Mark Wickstrom, who has been leading you on a tour of the site and talking to the artists, has a very good friend who works at the National Building Museum in Washington, D.C. He had studied in Italy at the school that Pasquale Martini had run in the Carrara area of Italy, well known all over history for its beautiful marble. He had a school to train stone carvers from all over the world based in Pietrosanta near Carrara in Italy. And that is how we found him. Then we had to find an artist from Mexico, and we were very fortunate to make a connection through the Spanish Institute in Edina. And the director of that institute, Jose Antonio Abascal, is a very good friend of Javier del Cueto. One thing led to another, and we were very fortunate to have found Javier. So now we have our artists from Mexico and from Italy, from St. Paul's sister city of Neuss, from St. Anthony's sister city in Finland, and from St. Paul's sister city in Changsha, China. From the Miri Piri Gallery, we found Lazarus Takawira from Zimbabwe. And then the artist from Egypt, Salah Hamed, found us. He found us on the internet through our postings that we had put out for over a year and he had just returned from representing Egypt at the Venice Biennale. He sent us his credentials. We were astonished and we were so happy to have an artist from the Arab world join us. So there is our team of artists, six from Minnesota and eight from foreign countries. Yes, we're here uh, with uh, Craig David. He's uh, one of our local artists. Uh, he's from the west side of St. Paul. That's correct. And uh, we'd like to ask you a few questions. We've kind of made the rounds here. And, uh, now it's, it's time to hear from a local person. Uh, how do you feel about the symposium? Oh, I'm very excited about it. Very excited. Uh, especially to uh, work with the uh, international guys, I, I think, uh, and ladies. I think it'll be a wonderful experience. Uh -huh. And uh, talking with you earlier, you said you, you haven't really selected a stone uh, that you're going to use during the symposium. Uh, I see you're working on one here, but you said you're just kind of experimenting with it at this point. Yes, that's, that's true. This is a piece of taconite, and um, this is a piece of taconite. It, uh, it's an extremely hard, hard variety of stone, and uh, I've never worked with it before. I've worked with granite. This is uh, about twice as hard as granite is my understanding. And so I've been wrestling with it for a couple of hours here trying to determine whether I'm actually going to use it or be able to uh, utilize this piece of stone. It's a, uh, we'll take a look at it in a minute. It's a beautiful, it's got a beautiful form already. So Mother Nature has uh, partially carved this piece, which is one of the reasons that I uh, 
I think it would work out for me, but uh, we'll see whether I can actually handle the uh, the medium itself here. So we may have to go back at Casota Stone. We'll see. Okay. Um, if you were uh, to choose another stone, what what is your favorite material to work in? Well, I love Georgia marble <laughs> or Portuguese marble. Uh, Minnesota does not have any marbles. There are some beautiful stones. Uh, the granites are very consistent. Uh, I'd have to say the best stone that I've ever used for Minnesota is uh, Kettle River Sandstone. And Mark, you probably know that they don't even uh, harvest that anymore. They don't quarry it anymore. There are some antique stones. It's got a beautiful consistency to it. Uh, it holds up very well to the weather and it carves like butter. So it's, uh, and you can get some nice detail, all, although you cannot polish it, but uh, y you can get some really super beautiful patinas on it. And it's a, it's a great stone. So I would say that probably, we don't have any of that here though, so we're, we're looking for the next best thing. Now, uh, I had a question about this particular rock you're working on right now. Is it, this is conducive to uh, polishing? That's my understanding. Yes, I have not. Philip Ricky uh, uh, and Peter uh, Morales. Morales, yes, uh, those guys are my mentors on the stone when uh, they both worked on the Wellstone Memorial up in uh, northern Minnesota where the uh, Wellstone's plane crashed. And they utilized this type of stone, and so they've done battle with it, and uh, they have a pretty good understanding of what can be done with the stone. Mm -hmm. And so they've been advising me, and now under advisement, I'm, I'm just checking it out and we'll see how it works out but that, that's one reason I was so interested in this stone is it does polish well it has some wonderful colors in it it's uh, striated it's uh, it's a layered so stone uh, a sedimentary stone and it's got fabulous uh, color throughout and so I'd like to try to utilize those colors within the piece well I'm really glad myself that we've got some uh, stones like taconite here uh, because you know it's all over in the northern part of Minnesota and uh, you know, people just don't realize the, the buried beauty that we have in our That's state true. and the rich resources we do have. Uh, got one last question for you. Um, have you decided on, on what type of a piece that you want to do for the uh, symposium? Basically, it will most likely be a figurative piece. And uh, I believe it'll, it'll be an abstract piece more than likely, uh, depending on uh, what the stone is willing to give to the project. And so, Many times what happens with these projects, uh, as with many varieties of uh, art making, is that the material will tell you where to go next. And so that's what I'm looking for, uh, the avenue to follow and the, the, the lead that the stone will give me. And so this is why I'm, I'm uh, basically fooling around with it today and, and trying to get a, a deeper look into the stone. Well, uh, those are very true words. I, that's my philosophy as well, is that uh, sometimes the material tells you exactly what direction you have to go. No matter how much training you have, um, it, it's going to dictate to you. That's right. One thing I'd like you to do is just take a look at that, that side, on this side. It's, uh, you know, the color. You can see it here. And if that gets polished out, that'll be an incredibly beautiful piece of uh, material. I'm not, I'm not sure. These are the... These are the uh, core drilling marks from when they uh, quarried this uh, piece of stone and I'm not sure whether I'll take those out or not uh, I may try to smooth them down a bit and then and then pull that uh, pull that color out that would be my hope and then to give it to give it some very fluid looking form so I'm not sure I can do it though so we'll find out well we'll be uh, stopping back and uh, checking on your progress so uh, thanks for your time today and uh, like I said we'll be visiting you more in, in the well, next if few I'm weeks. working on a Yellowstone next week you know you'll know I had trouble <laughs> okay this Very this good. stone could this stone could work as a sculpture as it is though so uh -huh. yeah it's a beautiful beautiful piece of stone thanks thanks mark mm -hmm. thank you So this, this would be the horizontal area, and there's a there's a weakness there. I suppose when it came out of the ground, it uh, it fractured there, and so that's definitely got to be taken off because what I'd like to do with this piece is stand it up. And you know, Minnesota, we get a little bit of ice in the winter, 
and so when that ice gets in there it'll it'll break that loose eventually and so you should have a especially with sedimentary uh, stone you should have a fairly solid stone so you don't have that that problem with uh, ice deterioration on it We had to get the artists from all over the world into the United States, and I have five words to say. Thank God for Betty McCollum. The office of U.S. Representative Betty McCollum has been really helpful to us through this whole process to understand what we need to do in to secure artist visas. Several of these artists come from countries that don't require visas so that they could enter the United States through the U.S. Visa Waiver Program. It is, however, a very challenging issue. And in fact, last Friday, uh, Atsuo Okamoto was actually detained for a while at the airport while we worked it out but we happily managed to be able to do that. The U.S. Immigration Service was most helpful to us, and of course, the office of Betty McCollum. We just cannot thank everyone there, Chow Lee and Jeremiah Ellis, for their remarkable help. And there we have them all here. But it has taken us almost two years to find all the artists and get them here to St. Paul for Minnesota Rocks. Okay, we're uh, paying a visit to Peter Morales, a local carver from St. Paul here, and uh, we're going to stop by and ask him a few questions. Uh, Peter's also uh, done some work with organizing this event and uh, been a tremendous help uh, to get the symposium off the ground. Uh, Peter, you wanted to give us uh, some comments about how you feel about the symposium so far? Oh, it's, it's great. Uh, you know, we have so many, so many artists from all over the world. And uh, it's just uh, just phenomenal to have this going on in, in St. Paul. You know, you have guys with a lot of experience who come in different, you know, everybody has different experience and uh, such widely different parts of the world. You know, China, Japan, Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. Egypt, uh, Italy, Finland, Germany, Mexico. Can you tell us a little bit about the piece you're working on, uh, the, the type of stone it is, and what you hopefully are going to make out of it? Ah, yeah, well, uh, uh, it, and I think a couple of, uh, of, I think like three of the Minnesota artists have chosen to use the, the stone that comes from the iron uh, mines. And uh, it's, uh, it's very hard, very hard stone. This particular stone is, uh, has a layer of stromatolite in it. Uh, which is fossilized algae, and uh, it's from a formation that's about two two billion years old. It's extremely dense. These are these are the sort of rocks that they uh, would crush and pulverize in the in the in the mines up north of, in Minnesota to uh, to make taconite, and uh, it has some really beautiful features to it. The the stone does and. Not too many sculptures have been have been made with uh, with the stone, mm -hmm. and it's it's really <laughs> it's really hard to mm -hmm. to carve and to to cut and to wow yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's a bit of a challenge. Um, it was my understanding you you helped out uh, Phil Ricky on the Paul Wellstone uh, right. memorial a little right. bit and you handled some of this material. So yeah, I had some experience working with this stuff, and so mm -hmm. yeah, it, you know, it, you, I know that there's there's a limit to what you can do, but. It, it can be, you know, you can work it, mm -hmm. and uh, and I guess the part of the challenge is to bring out the beauty of the stone mm -hmm. without getting terribly frustrated. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, speaking of that, what what is the uh, creation uh, going to be? Oh well, uh, it's it, this is going to be uh, like a four-legged creature. It's gonna have, you know, so I want to make this a very sort of a, a powerful, uh, you know, zoomorphic figure, mm -hmm. like a, an animal, 
But uh, part of the reason for that is, is uh, you know, it, it gives it a little character. Uh, and I'm also trying to discover what, what character there is in this particular stone. Uh, but also by focusing on, on uh, putting, putting four legs on it, it, would, it gives, gives the mass of the stone, it, it lifts the mass of the stone up, up off the ground. You know, usually you see stone is, is sort of set in the ground. Here you got, you know, it's, the mass of the stone is going to be actually picking itself up off the ground. And uh, that's about the most gesture I think I'll be able to, to get mm -hmm. from, from this stone because it's, I'm not going to be able to do a lot of detailed carving on it. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be a very simple, simple gesture, but I think, you know, very, very powerful in, in, in the big, you know, the big form. Mm -hmm. It won't have much detailed carving, or it won't have any detailed carving in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, good luck to you in Thank your you. quest, and uh, we'll be stopping back with you and checking your progress. Great. Thanks. Thanks. We're here with uh, David Wirick, and uh, he's one of our local artists from St. Paul. And um, he's just moving around a big slab of stone that he peeled off of this, uh, a shelf off of this uh, block of uh, limestone. Um, could you tell us, David, how do you feel about the, uh, being a participant in the uh, symposium? Uh, it's a, a fabulous and wonderful experience to have. Uh, just in uh, two days, three days that I've met the artists already, um, I, I can tell that they want to work and they want to make sculptures. and. And that's what I want to do as well, and then we can meet and talk about the sculptures and, and the process. And, and uh, on the splitting of this stone, um, Pasquale from uh, Italy, he was helping me out, and so you know, it was, we're bonding. We don't speak very well together, but well, it kind of falls in line with the uh, original um, philosophy of the original uh, symposium from uh, 1959. Is that the uh, international compa uh, compassion and the partnership and camaraderie? Yeah, Would you agree, or absolutely? I mean, he, you know, I don't speak in Italian. He doesn't speak in English, but still, we were able to split a rock in two. <laughs> Would you agree that uh, work is really a universal language? Once you get some of the technicalities out of the way. Um, well, I mean, I think for sculptors and, and artists, I mean, that's that's that is essentially what they're all about: is the creation of uh, through work, uh, the creation of a sculpture or you know, it could be the creation of a painting, or, or, but in this case it is stone. And I think um, just that kind of um, tactile yeah. that people have um, in working together, I think that's kind of what the, where it comes from a little bit. Uh -huh. um, could you tell us a little bit about the piece that you're working on? Well, I'm, uh, I'm actually going to be doing two pieces, kind of uh, uh, bookend pieces, um, mm -hmm. kind of totemic, mm -hmm. uh, like totem-like. Um, so on the wider ends, there'll be probably faces carved on either one, mm -hmm. um, and then hopefully be stood up and placed in the ground about three feet, two feet, three feet. Okay. So um, they'll just be like lone sentinels or okay. uh, guardians. Okay. Uh, do you have a location picked out already for this piece, or uh, is that up in the air yet? That's still, I mean, there's a couple sites that I really like, um, but I, I haven't made any kind of final decision on that. Um, I really kind of like, there's an area, um, Highway 13 by the Bruce Vento Trail, mm -hmm. Um, but I think, you know, between uh, West St. Paul and, uh, um, and, and the west side of St. Paul, mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of a nice, nice location for a, a guardian. Yeah. <laughs> keep them West St. Paul people out of here. Yeah, I keep trying to put myself in uh, you, you guys' shoes, especially from St. Paul. It's got to be a thrill to be able to participate in a symposium with all these different countries, and uh, what a wonderful experience. It is. It, uh, and so far it has been already. I hope mm -hmm. it just keeps coming as it is. It's, I mean, it's just a, a time to work and with other sculptors and just to, you know, do stuff and make it and, you know, not worry about, you know, the other things in life, such as, you know, paying my bills. <laughs> and uh, an, a part often that people overlook is the camaraderie, camaraderie that's built and the, uh, the, the relationships that are built out of a symposium. And, uh, you know, you're looking at probably some friends for life out of I this thing. So. I hope so. 
That'd be, you know, if, the, if, if that came out of it, that'd be fabulous. I mean, you know, just to, to communicate with somebody across the world, you know, what are you up to this week? Where are you showing at? You know, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. you know what, are you, what are you making? To, you know, I want to kind of pick their brain a little bit to, of, of what they're thinking of conceptually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, the other part of the symposium, I think, is everybody can learn something from one another. So, mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, we're going to move on and talk to your uh, colleague down the line here, but we'll be back and we're going to check your progress on your piece. All right, well, thank you very much. Okay, we're here with Javier de Cuoto, and uh, he's from Mexico City, and he's one of our uh, international artists representing Mexico. Um, yes. How do you feel about being in this symposium? Well, I, I am really happy to, to be here in this beautiful city, uh, working uh, together with another uh, group of uh, artists from all, all around the world. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is, would this be your first uh, symposium, or have you uh, attended uh, others? No, it's my first symposium in, in stone. Mm -hmm. I I was participated in, in, in another symposium in, in ceramics mm -hmm. and, and and in wood too. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about the stone you're working on. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks like you've chosen a local limestone. Or? Yes, it's, it's a local limestone. I, I choose this. I, I, I really like the the stone. Uh, when I when I saw all the stones, this uh, this was that I uh, really like it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like well uh, the color, the oh, well it's a lot of this this color. But this this uh, this stone has a, a natural cure, mm -hmm. and and I really like it, no. And I say well I want to to work in this stone. No? Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what your uh, your project is going to be, your your final piece? Yes. Uh, well, actually, I, I I'm think, I'm thinking to work in a in a project uh, uh, with two rivers. Of course, the first one is Mississippi River, okay. and the other one is uh, the Usumacinta River. It's a river in the south of Mexico, in the border uh, between Guatemala and 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 Mexico. And it's uh, one of the. Um, this river is, is in the Maya zone, no? and w with a very important uh, archaeological places by the Mayas, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Yaxilan in Mexico and Piedras Negras in, in Guatemala, no. So, uh, like the Mayan civilization, the Olmecs, uh, Incas. Uh, uh, well, I, I, I yes, yes, the uh, is is the Mayans, no. But uh, my my project is more than is. Uh, I am thinking in a visit from the Usumacinta River to the to the to the Mississippi. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my 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 work uh, will be uh, horizontal. Okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. um, Anything else you'd like to share with us about the symposium to this point? Well, I, I, I am just uh, for a few days here and I'm really, really happy and really with all the people, all the, all the artists are really friendly people. Uh, uh, for instance, David, the, 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 this, this is sculpture in, in the, the, uh, my neighbor, <laughs> it's really... Uh, he, he told me very important questions about the, the stone and, mm -hmm. and everybody's really, really uh, friendly no? and, and, and really good artists. Uh, that's one kind of a ongoing theme that we've encountered with other artists too is that uh, people overlook the camaraderie, that, it, it, camaraderie yes. that's developed yes, out of a yes, symposium. Yes. And everybody uh, learn about everybody and, and it's... And, and the, um, the opportunity to, to be together is uh, really, really a great thing. No? Looks like you've been very busy today. You got uh, a lot well, of chips I'm on just, the ground I, here. I'm just uh, beginning. I, I'm just beginning, but but uh, I think it's uh, the 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 stone is very friendly too. No? 
Well, uh, we're going to be stopping back and checking on your progress, so uh, we'll leave you for now. But uh, we'll be back uh, next week and okay. seeing how far you're along. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. You have been able to see the opening week of Minnesota Rocks, the St. Paul International Stone Carving Symposium. We're so happy to have all of these wonderful artists here. You've had a chance to meet a few. Mark, what did they see? Well, we had an interesting little tour around. Uh, we talked to some of the international artists and we talked to uh, a good handful of the uh, local artists. Uh, one of the things that was a common theme that I saw was uh, a real sense of camaraderie being built in, uh, in the uh, true spirit of the original symposium from 1959. So hopefully that's going to continue and uh, everybody's a little tentative in the first couple days but uh, we do have some good artists that are really starting to tear into their work and uh, I think by next week this time when we come back for another visit we're going to see some dramatic uh, results. Well, that's great. And we also would love for people to check our website, www.minnesotarocks.org. If you click on the calendar, you'll see some of the wonderful events that are coming up in the weeks ahead. For example, Historic St. Paul is launching tours of the uh, rock architecture of the Capitol area, Upper Summit Avenue, and downtown from our symposium site. And on June 7th, 14th, and 21st, you'll be able to come to the St. Paul College Auditorium to hear the artists talk about their art and where they come from. The College of Visual Arts Gallery on the corner of Selby and Western will be opening an exhibition featuring all of the 14 artists. So we hope you'll check the website and keep up with the wonderful events that are going to be happening throughout the next six weeks. We hope to be back with you next week to see the progress that 14 artists from throughout Minnesota and the world are making in sculpting beautiful works of art from Minnesota Rock. See you next time. Thank you.